Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go ahead and implement a route that's going to list all our orders. So if we come to our mini documentation here, we can see that we have this slash order slash orders route that can enable us to list all orders made. And we're going to go ahead and implement this. So right now we can even see that the person with the right to that specific route is the super user. So let's implement this. So I'm going to go to orders router. I mean orders routes. And then the first thing we're going to do is to specify our route. So in this case, our route is going to be at order router. So we have our order router. And then we're going to specify the request in this case. So our request is going to be a get request. And then what we're going to do is to add in the route. So it's going to be slash orders. So now we're going to go ahead and protect this route uh, using objectwt. So what we shall do is to come and say it's going to be an async. And it's going to be an async function and then it's going to be list all orders so right now we're going to protect this by providing our authorized dependency so that authorized dependency is going to be of jwt and then it's going to be equal to pens So right after doing this, we're going to protect this by saying try, then we're going to uh, specify that this is going to be a JWT required route. So we are required to provide a JWT for us to access this route. We're going to say authorize dot, in this case we're going to say JWT required. And after doing this, the next thing we're going to also do is to accept any error. So we're going to accept any exceptions we're going to say exception as e so we're going to return any exception as e then we shall raise uh, an http so it's going to be http exception and we shall first specify the status code so in this case the status code is going to be equal to status in this case we shall pass in http 401 and authorized and then the next thing we shall pass in right here is going to be uh, the detail of this error so what we shall do is to say detail is going to be equal to invalid token so after doing this the next thing we're going to do is to come right here and be able to check for the current user's identity so what we're going to do in this case is to find out so what we shall do is to actually find the current user so to find the current user we say current user is going to be for two so we're going to use our authorize we're going to say authorize dot so in this case what we're going to say is get jwt subject so with every JWT that you create, we hide in the identity of the user as to whom it belongs. So for example, that JWT is located within the subject variable in our JWT. So let's go ahead and query for that user. So to get that user, we shall say user is going to be equal to session dot query dot. In this case, we're going to specify that we are querying for the user model. And then what we shall do is to filter so we shall filter for the username. So in this case, it's going to be user dot username. And if that username is equal to the current the current user variable, since it's going to have the name of the current logged in user. So we're going to say current user. Then what we shall do is to come. In this case, we have a current user. Then we shall get the first object that has that specific username. So after getting that username. We are going to check if this user is a super user. So to do that, remember in our models, so if I head over to our models right here, actually in our models, we can see that every user has dot is staff has an is staff uh, variable that has a default of false. So in this case, we're going to go and check if this user is a, if this user is a staff. So we're going to say if user dot is staff then what we're going to do is to order, query for all the orders so what we're going to do is to say uh, what we're going to say is actually uh, orders we're going to query for all orders and it's going to be session dot query 
So we're going to say session dot query and then we're going to specify that we're querying for orders. Then we're going to get all orders. Then after doing this, we are going to use our JSON labeling call that to return a list of orders. Then what we're going to do in this case is to return a list of orders. So we're going to say JSON label JSON label encoder. So this is going to be our JSON label encoder. And right in our, our JSON label encoder, we're going to pass in our orders. So right after we returning this, we're also going to uh, get uh, that situation in case we have an error. We're going to take care of that. So we're going to come and say else. Actually, instead of saying else, what we're going to do is to just actually return. We shall actually raise an HTTP exception. So I'm going to copy this. This. HTTP exception. I'm going to paste it right here. And what we're going to do is to return an error. So what we're going to do is to return an error, uh, and this error is going to be unauthorized. So in this case, we're going to say uh, you are not a super user. So since only super users are to make this request, what we're going to do is to be able to block other users from using this request. So, for example, if we went ahead and tested this, I'm going to head over to Insomnia. I'm going to create a new request. So, this new request is going to be the one to get all. So, in this case, we're going to get all orders. And then it's going to be a get request. So, we're going to create. So, we need to uh, provide the URL. So, the URL is going to be localhost. 8000 slash orders slash orders so we're going to also provide the authorization header so i'll come and say it's going to be authorization and it needs to have a value of bearer and then the token so i'll head over to the login route and make another request to access another access token so i get the access token right here and I'll head over to the get all orders route. So I'll put in the token. So when I send this request, we can now see that we are not a super user. This is because we do not have a super user created. So let's go ahead and create a user who is a super user. So what I'll do is to come to our sign up route. So actually, our sign up route. So I'm going to just come, it's not here. So I'll say uh, sign up a user. So what I'll do is to come and create this. It's going to be a post method. So I'll come and create this. So this is going to be, a, we're going to specify our body as JSON. And then, so here our body is going to be as JSON. So I'll come and specify the user's username. It's going to be equal to, let's say, the Batman. And then, so let's see the various fields on our user model. So I'll head over to schemas.py. We go to the sign up model so we have these various fields so let me copy this actually so i'm going to copy this so if i come right here i'm going to replace this with this so i'm just going to come tidy this up so what we have is a user so in this case i'm going to form a user called batman so we're going to also have the email as batman.com batman <laughs> batman at gmail.com and now we're going to provide a password so in this case we're going to specify that so what we shall say is active is going to be true and when you specify uh, that is staff attribute to true so in this case we're going to say that is staff attribute is going to be true so this means that this is going to be a super user so i'm going to uh, save this and when i provide the url so our url is going to be localhost in this case we're going to say 5000 so we're going to say localhost 5000 slash in this case is going to be auth and slash sign up so when i make this request so right now we see our server is not training so let's see uh see what is happening here so actually this is localhost 8000 so if i make this request it's going to go ahead and create our user that's why we see a 201 created status so let's go ahead and log in this user. So we have our username as Batman and our password as password. So we need to go to the login route. And what I'll do is to provide our, our username, Batman, and then login. So we have been able to access a token. So I'm going to copy this token. 
And when I copy this token, I'm going to simply go and to the route that lists all orders. So I'm going to go and provide this token. So I'm going to remove this token and provide a new token. So this is a super user now. So if I send, we can now see a list of orders uh, that can be only accessed by a super user. In this video, we've been able to see how to uh, add super user status to a super user. We've also been able to list all the orders that have been made. Thanks for watching, guys, and see you in the next video. Bye.